conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's have a conversation. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. Let's have a conversation. Woo! Pick up some gems, life is all you make. Let's go. We keep it real, we don't talk to fake. Tell them how this talk show on the neck coming for all the mates. Let's have a conversation. Woo! Pick up some gems, life is all you make. Let's go. We keep it real, we don't talk to fake. Tell them how this talk show on the neck coming for all the mates. Let's have a conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's have a conversation. Hello, everyone. This is Michelle Biggs, CEO of My Best Everyday Coaching and Consulting and the host of Real Conversations with Michelle. Welcome to this evening's episode of Real Conversations, which is part of my Jumpstart series. And this episode is titled Fitness and Nutrition. For those of you who are new to my channel, I am a certified life coach. I'm also a, an executive career um, coach and leadership coach as well. I started this podcast just out of, of desire during the pandemic to support people in a different way. And of course, we all were virtual at that time. So what better way to do it than to do something virtual and uh, have been going strong for the last four years. Now, I do talk about a lot of, a lot of lifestyle topics with the goal that something you hear, you'll be able to apply in a positive way for yourself or in support of other people. Now, this podcast is educational, so like anything educational, make sure you do your homework. What you hear is going to be feedback, and you'll hear people's journeys, but you need to make sure that anything you apply, it really does make sense for you. So having said all of that, let me introduce you to my guest for tonight. And first up, I'm going to bring up Jackie. Hello. Hey, Jackie, how are you? I'm good. And how are you? I am well. I am well. So why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Well, hello, everyone. My name is Jackie Allen, and I am in the fitness industry. I've been a part of, um, I'm the owner of Z Fitness with Jackie, Inc. And I've been, um, I've been in business. June will be 11 years. And mainly, I, I love to help the community with their fitness goals. So I do a lot of things as class. I do. I teach classes. Um, I do a lot of um, uh, meeting one on one with people, consultations, and just really talking about people's health and getting everyone excited about being healthy and fit. So that's what I do. Thank you, Miss Jackie. We'll give you an opportunity for people to learn a little bit more about you as we sure. get our questions this evening. Next, sure. I'm going to. Bring up my other fitness instructor, Fatima. Hey, can you hear us, Fatima? You're on mute. I'm always on mute. Hi. <laughs> hey, Fatima. Why don't you tell everybody about yourself? Uh, awesome. My name is Fatima Gales. Um, I am the owner and main instructor of Love Yoga 333, which is located in Lumberton, North Carolina. Um, a little bit about me. I retired after 24 years from the military. Uh, I wouldn't say I needed something to do, but uh, it's a, a big difference from jumping out of airplanes every day to mm -hmm. not doing it. And uh, yoga, I tell anybody yoga basically saved my life. So I, um, the goal was to just bring it to a smaller community. Um, and a lot of, a lot of people in this area aren't familiar with it. So it's just really awesome to like, bring it to the community and, and see kind of eyes open, like, what is this yoga thing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's definitely began um, to become my love and my passion. So I just enjoy and bring it to the people and l making them understand exactly what it is, that it's not about stretching, but so much more. Yep. And I'll have, have you talk a little bit more about that as well yes. um, in a few minutes. Next, I'm going to bring up my fitness and nutrition enthusiast, Marissa, how are you? I'm well, Michelle, how are you? Good, good. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I love that we've got instructors. I'm not an instructor, but I am your um, fitness friend, your fitness enthusiast. And I have helped to mentor people towards their wellness goals 
And I love to bring my enthusiasm for fitness to help other people get enthused about being fit and conquering the mindsets that help you get fit. My enthusiasm has taken me to the amateur bodybuilding stage. And right before that pandemic hit um, in 2019, I was in an MPC show where I won my class 40 over. Um, and I've just continued on. I've been an enthusiast for about 15 plus years and I probably won't stop, right? I wanna help others latch on to the thing that helps them to stay forever fit, so. Thank, Thank you for, you for that. Thank you for that. And last, but definitely not least, my registered nutritionist, dietitian, and nutritionist, Miss Jasmine Westbrook. How are you, Jasmine? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Tell people a little bit about yourself. Yes, I'm Jasmine Westbrooks. I'm a registered dietitian, certified diabetes educator. Um, and I have a nonprofit, Eat Well Exchange, where we teach communities how to eat healthy based on their cultural foods through cooking classes, culinary programs, um, and also through speaking engagements. And I also am the CEO of Nourish Through Nutrition, where we're pretty much helping you develop healthy relationships with your food uh, through your lifestyle changes. So I'm excited to be here with all these ladies and I'm excited where the conversation goes. I'm going to tell y'all, I have gotten several text messages from people who I think we all have been in and out of our fitness journeys over the years, right? And I know I am learning and growing every day. Um, but fitness and nutrition, uh, nutrition happen to be one of the top uh, resolutions. And I know some people don't like calling them resolutions, but every year people are setting goals, whatever you want to call it. Right. And fitness and nutrition tend to be at the top of the list um, in terms of what people uh, want to focus on in any given year. So that's why I thought it was important uh, to talk about it. In addition, typically by March, people start to fall off of um, their their concentration of those things that they said. So I'm hoping from tonight uh, and know, knowing what I know from you ladies, it will spark people, um, get people to think about maybe other things they may be able to incorporate in their routines, right? That'll that'll help them to keep, uh, to stay motivated and, and maybe even try something new. So that is the goal of this particular episode. So Ladies, first question, what was the catalyst for you to get super focused on your fitness and nutrition goals? So Jasmine, I'll let you go first since you you were introduced last. I'll let you go first this time. <laughs> that is fine. Mm -hmm. um, there's been several things that have happened for me. Like I always say, and I'm sure a lot of other people have heard, life is life lives, right? Life be mm -hmm. life. Um, and I feel like we, as people, just go through different lifestyle changes that it's okay to have that check-in um, to be able to figure out, like, what do I need to work on because we're still living? Um, but for me, my very first encounter with health was actually from family members, just passing away from things that could have been prevented if they mm. had the proper education, if they were more adherent, but also had professionals that would work with them to be more adherent to some of the lifestyles that they needed. And then even going into my own journey from being younger at 17 and modeling because I was 5'10", very tall, not good at basketball, to having to fit in such a small box of this is how my body should look. Mm -hmm. Then going through college, gaining 30 pounds, and mm. then losing it after going through so many different lifestyle changes myself, even while trying to become a dietitian and learning about like what really worked for me and what was more sustainable. Um, but then later on learning that, you know, my health is not just about the food that I eat, but the environments that I'm around. Am I getting enough sleep? Am I getting enough water? There's just so many different factors. How am I managing my stress? So yeah. I would say, you know, for me right now, those are the key things that I'm looking at is it's nutrition, but it's also incorporating other lifestyle habits that are going to further my health. And yes. you know, maybe 10 years from now, I will probably have other needs and I have to reevaluate that. Yeah. Thank you for that. And, and one of the things I am going to do is I'm going to do a health series, um, mental, physical, spiritual health series, starting probably in April. Because to your point, it, it's more than just about fitness and nutrition. We need to be paying attention to all aspects of our lives, right? 
So thank you for, for that. Uh, Marissa, how about you? Gosh, I have to echo one thing that Jasmine said, which is family members, watching family members um, succumb to something. And I think there were two pivots in my life. One was watching my grandma, you know, in, in the hospital, visiting her and thinking she actually was a very lean lady. Um, but just watching her pass away helped me think about how could I further my life and, and get more longevity. And the second thing that's a catalyst, maybe a little bit more superficial was I had a friend say to me in my early 20s that after 27, it goes downhill. Mm. And I can't tell you how much that it, it was a it was a resolution maybe that she had, but I wasn't going to own that and take that on. And right. so um, those are the two things that helped me to that propelled me into controlling what I could control. Mm -hmm. I always talk about um, it's not that fitness prevents all sickness or wellness prevents all sickness, but can I get well enough to even withstand the the, the illness that might be coming my way? How do I yeah. prepare to be strong enough to fight what might be coming? So uh, family and just a statement that said, that's not going to be me. So yeah. Things that propel me, sure. Thank you, Marissa. How about you, Jackie? Well, for me, um, it, it was a lot. And now that I'm, I just hit 50 um, this past year, it really takes on a different toll um, knowing the different decades and how your body develops. So one thing for me is I ended up losing 100 pounds in my um, late 30s, early 40s. And I felt the best of my health at, during the 40s. And then COVID hit like everyone else. Um, not a lot to do, Not didn't know what to do. Mm. So then you gain weight. I gained 20, 25 pounds after losing mm -hmm. 100. And just knowing that I wanted to show um, the community and my and the people that follow me how you can be um, big, small. It doesn't matter what body type you are. It's about keeping yourself active and fit and moving and yes. um, having fun doing it. So that's what I'm, yeah. my business is about. It's trying. I do a lot of fitness classes, but whatever you do, have fun doing it. Yeah. And when you do that, you also meet others. Um, it's a mental aspect of it too. Coming mm -hmm. to a fitness mm -hmm. class, the stress of the day, you mm -hmm. come to a fitness class and you let it all go. And yeah. when you're doing that, an hour goes by so fast, you're like, oh my goodness. And then in a couple of weeks, you've lost weight. You feel yeah. better about your body and about who you are as a person. And that to me is what fitness is about. I don't care if someone weighs 200 pounds or they're 150 pounds. It's yeah. about what you're doing to keep your body healthy because I can be a thicker person, but I'm very healthy. And I, I do a yeah. lot of running and I do a lot of exercise and I can keep up with the most of them. I don't care if I'm 50 or yeah. if someone is 20. We all, you know, yeah. we're starting to look great in our 50s and 60s. Yeah. Well, and guess what? The skinniest person doesn't necessarily mean that you're healthy, right? And my nutritionist, you probably, you know, talk about that. Yes, ma'am. But yeah, so how many of y'all gained weight during the uh, pandemic? Let's raise our hands. I know I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I remember I lost 50 pounds um, during my heaviest. Mm -hmm. And just awesome. over the years being sedentary, right? And and the pandemic, like you said, all of us sitting on and not moving as much. Um, definitely uh added some some pounds. Fatima, how about you? Yeah, so I um I've always been active all my life. Um Yoga came into my life, specifically yoga, because I still go to the gym. People say, oh, you can't just do yoga. <laughs> yoga came into my life, um, like really in my life consistently. Um, I was in a really stressful school at the time. I was living in the Midwest. Um, so it's cold. <laughs> you know, you don't want to go out. I was in a really um, competitive school. And uh, unfortunately, at that time, um, I had had I had suffered a miscarriage. Mm. And so like mentally, emotionally, I was just drained, like physically I was drained. I was like going to class like a zombie. And it was just one of my peers said, hey, you know, my wife teaches yoga, you know, downtown and I think you should go. And I was like, girl, I'm just going to go to the gym, you know, 
And it was just one of those, like, I think you should go. And I went and I'll tell anybody yoga saved my life. Mm -hmm. Like it was just one of those things. It was, I've, I've done it before over the years, but I was still a gym rat. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm Mm -hmm. still running like marathons. I'm still, you know, competitive running, you know, obstacle courses. Um, but it really hit home. It was like an eye opener. Like I had an epiphany just, and it was, it was the first time I went, you Mm -hmm. know, in years and I just felt so much better. And then I just started going every day and it was like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Mm-hmm. This is exactly what I'm supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And to Jackie's point, just finding something that you like, and we'll get into some tips as well. Because I know I was introduced to um, Reform of Pilates, and I think I was telling someone um, it's the first time since probably Zumba got introduced to the world where I actually stuck to anything. I mean, I literally I get up at seven before seven to get to class. And I, I haven't done that in years. Matter of fact, I wasn't trying to get up at six, five o'clock when I was going to work. I'm retired now. So being able to find something that you enjoy is very important. Um, what lessons have you learned? And some of you kind of went into a little bit, but what is what are some lessons that you learned just going through your, your journey? And I'll start with you, Marissa, first. One lesson I've learned is not to give up on yourself. Mm-hmm. People give romantic partners like a hundred chances. Mm-hmm. We give a job that's <laughs> giving us H E double hockey. We give yeah. a job a hundred chances. We give family members who have run us hundred chances. They, mm-hmm. they keep coming back and we keep taking them back. But we go to the gym, yoga, Pilates for two or three weeks. I don't know if this is working. Yeah. I'm done with this. Give yourself a chance to see something. Mm-hmm. So that right there is the biggest lesson mm-hmm. and it's going to look different. You may want to spend an hour and just because you don't get the hour and you got 20 minutes, mm-hmm. you ready to say, well, I didn't get that hour. I'm done with it. No. Yeah. Yeah. Be sufficient. yeah. Give yourself a chance. Yeah. So that's, that's a big lesson. Mm-hmm. And what did I say? What's the, what's the, what's the um, common thing? I don't know if it, uh, how many days does it take to create a habit? Like 21, 21, 21, right. 21 days, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jackie, and I'll go with Jackie and Fatima next. Anything from your from your journey that you learned? I learned to just, I said it before, try something new. Mm-hmm. Um, what the what shocked my body and I lost a hundred pounds pretty fast was Zumba was yeah. the first thing that I got into. And then I became, that was the first thing that I became an instructor in. And what I had did so many things before that I was on the treadmill. I was, you name it. I probably tried it step, whatever it was, but for some reason, Zumba was something that it got my attention. And from there, it just went forward. So I just say, try new things. If something fails, don't quit. Try something else because what works for you might not, what might work for someone else might not work for you. So just keep trying different things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's happening on your journey? Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna piggyback off of Jackie and Marissa. Um, find that motivation. And I, I even tell people, you know, I used to tell soldiers, fake motivation is still motivation. You find that motivation and give yourself some grace. So if you skip a day, it's okay. Mm-hmm. You skip a day. You can't you can't like make up a day in the gym. Like some people's mm-hmm. like, oh well, I skipped Tuesday, so I'm gonna go hard on Wednesday. There's no such thing. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing. Just stick to it. Like Jackie was saying, you know, give yourself some grace, like Marissa was saying, and just find that motivation. And, you know, Jackie mentioned the time you, you might not get that hour in, but 20 minutes is better than nothing. Yeah. Do something. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. Thank you for that, Fatima. Jasmine, how about you? Lessons yeah, I would learn. piggyback off of like Fatima just because recently I've learned from my ups and downs too. The motivation train that's going to end. Be inspired, you mm-hmm. know. Like mm-hmm. motivation is not going to get you where you are truly wanting to go. Um, and set intentions too with your inspiration. And sometimes mm-hmm. those intentions don't need to be a physical form of something. It may be an experience. It may mm-hmm. be being fit. Because you want to take this trip and you don't want, you know, to have to, you know, be in a wheelchair, whatever that looks like for you. 
Right. What do you want to experience um, instead of comparing it to like, okay, I need to fit in these jeans or I need to fit in this dress. What other things would you like to do? Do you want to play with your grandchildren, you know, and be able to keep up with them? Do you want to ride a bike with your fiance or your husband? Like those are the type of things I think you have to think about. And Mm -hmm. for me, that has brought on so many more um, just ways of showing myself grace even um, when I don't have a perfect day, because guess what? There isn't a perfect day. There isn't a perfect diet. No one it on this sure, It anymore. sure isn't. And I tell you, I think I was telling someone, I don't know who I remember. To, so, you know, this is Girl Scout season. Yes. So, you know, they're out. Yes. And I don't know about y'all, but you can't just eat one. <laughs> and I remember just eating a whole dog on sleeve. And I'm like, okay, Michelle, now, you know, dog on well, you were not supposed to do that. But you know what, Michelle? Yeah, go ahead. It's Melissa. okay. It's 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 okay. okay. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I'm telling you, I don't think we give ourselves enough grace. Like there're going to be times like Jasmine was saying like you're just going to be like I don't want to. I don't yeah. want to today and I'm going to eat this whole sleep. You know what? That's fine. But then tomorrow, I want you to get up, find that motivation and go to the gym. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> it is. I keep telling myself that and I do try to get back into sw- not letting too much time get past. Mm -hmm. where I'm not doing something, right? So common mistakes that people make, and you kind of talked a little bit about it a little bit, but let's start off with um, Jasmine. Common Common mistakes. mistakes. Mm -hmm. Unrealistic goals and expectations, comparing ourselves to people um, when we should not, even like comparing our bodies or comparing like what people eat to what we eat. We all have different needs uh, and we all are different people. Um, Mm -hmm. So I would say that's number one. And because what that does when you compare, it leads to then going to unrealistic type of diets. If you don't learn to love your body, and I think I put up a post about this yesterday. If you don't like the body that you're in now, it is going to literally make you be on a diet that's not realistic. That's going to mm. actually starve you. That's actually going to do the reverse of what you're trying to make it do for the long term. Um, so that's what I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I want I want you to talk a little bit about the diet thing in a minute, Jasmine, as well. Um, anyone else want to add to what Jasmine said? Jack, I see you. Go yeah, ahead. I would like to because one, I always tell my clients, the one thing that you do, if you're going to lose weight, you have, it, I mean, it's simple math. Work out more, eat less. That's just, that's just what it is. However, eat less and eat healthy, right? Well, not necessarily. Okay, go smaller ahead. Smaller portions, smaller portions. Yeah. Okay. Or increase well, your that's exercise. healthy. That is healthy. Eating healthy, lose weight, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But the biggest thing is you need to train your body to eat the way you can feel like you can eat for a lifetime. Yeah. Because the first time when I lost a hundred pounds, I did a strict diet that I wouldn't suggest to anyone. You know, and I lost the weight. I picked up the exercise. It was great. And I looked great. I was dressed. Boy, you couldn't tell me nothing. (laughs) But it was easier to put it back on because I started eating the way I used to eat. Yeah. And so it just creeped up year by year. But this time that now just from January to now, I lost 15 pounds. But I did it in a different way where now that I'm a nutritionist and I know the things to eat, what not to eat or eating things that I would like to eat. I just don't eat as much right. and I can live that way. You know, mm-hmm. I can still work out. I can still have fun. I mean, I teach five, six classes a day, but my body is used to that. So I have to do for me, I have to eat smaller portions. You know, I have, I did cut out some of the junk that I was eating, but yeah. I, I'm eating in a way now that I can live with. And yeah. that I feel is what's more important for each person. Yeah. Making it a lifestyle is huge. Yes. And Jasmine, I want to talk to you a little bit about that because I know there's some things that we tend to do. And the question really is, can you sustain it, right, longer term? Anyone else want to add to what Jasmine and and Jackie stated? Go ahead, Fatima. Jasmine is probably going to kill me for this. So, like, I don't believe in diets, right? (laughs) No. But like Jackie said, I believe in portion control. So, um, That I wanted to say that. And then I wanted to say say expectation management. And Jasmine touched on this a little bit. Your body is not going to change in two weeks. It's not realistic. Don't put that pressure on yourself. Just real expectations. Like 
you know for a fact that you eat you ate these three hamburgers, so you're not going to work that off in three weeks. It's just not realistic. So just expectation management, like it's, it's. I think, and I, Jackie or Jasmine could probably tell me it's like you can lose what is like a pound, a pound and a half a week or something like that health, healthily. Yeah. That's expectation management. Not like, oh, girl, I need to go on a cruise in two weeks and I need to lose 55 pounds. It's just not realistic. Yeah. It's yeah. not realistic, right? And, and, and because Jackie's I don't point, believe in diets, I'm like, yeah. don't do that. Yeah. Do and that. to Jackie's point, you may do something where you can lose that weight, but you're going to gain it right back, right? Yeah. You gain it right back. Yeah. Anybody else want to add? add only, to thing I'll, only thing I'll add is demonizing food groups because then you create fear. Okay. You demonize a food group. Oh, I can't eat rice. I can't eat. Let me just say, my husband's leaner than I, but he had like some kind of bread thing over here. I had a piece of it and my weight wasn't affected one bit. Yeah. The, when we demonize food groups, the, we, we draw fear in. We on a cruise. Like, I can't eat that rice. I, please, portion control. I'm, I'm, I'm a, with that and I'm about that. Have mm -hmm. in moderation. So I'll stop there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you see a lot of diets that are what? No carbs. No Right. And again, I think to jumpstart, you might be able to do something like that to get jump started. But to your point that many of you made, sticking to something like that longer term, you, you're not going to be able to do that. And you're setting yourselves up for failure if you think that you can. Right. OK, so. Jasmine, let's talk a little bit about nutrition. And I know we have Jackie, who's also a nutritionist. So Jackie, you can chime in as well as well as anybody else. But what's the, let's talk about the difference between a dietitian and a nutritionist. So let's start there, Jasmine. Yeah. So a dietitian is a board certified food and nutrition expert. And so what we do is we're certified or board certified uh, to provide what we consider medical nutrition therapy and mm -hmm. counseling. So it's not just for, you know, your standard, someone that may not have any medical conditions. You typically will see dietitians in the community. You'll see us also in hospitals working, too, because we have to, you know, create and counsel people regarding different medical conditions that they have. Because once you get a medical chronic condition, let's say like kidney disease or something like that, you really do need a registered dietitian because we study the evidence-based information in order to make sure that you're living long enough, depending on what stage of kidney disease you're at. Mm -hmm. So it goes into that much detail um, for a dietitian. And a nutritionist, it can vary. Someone can graduate from a nutrition um, school or graduate from a university with a nutrition degree and be a nutritionist, but they're still not board certified, mm -hmm. but they can still probably counsel on like some of your basics, kind of like what we're talking today. Right. Um, and the nutritionist is not, it's not like a regulated term. So that would be another okay. difference too. It's not kind of like if you, a good way to compare is like a nurse. A nurse go through the, all these rotations, all the schooling, and then they take an exam to become a registered nurse. The same thing for a dietitian. We have to go through rotations in different fields of food and nutrition, and we mm -hmm. take a board certified exam. And we have to keep up also that credential because yeah. we know that changes. As yeah. science is constantly coming out, we have to get those trainings in order to keep that board certification too. So that would be the difference. Yeah. When should someone see a nutritionist? Honestly, someone should see a dietitian or nutritionist uh, just as much as you see your doctor. And the reason mm. I say that is because you see your doctor when you're doing your six month checkup, you're seeing your dentist when you have to go every six months to get that cleaning. You should be doing the same with a dietitian nutritionist. Um, because like we talked about earlier, our bodies change, hormones mm -hmm. happen, we go through things and we oftentimes need that accountability and need that check in to see like, OK, I may not have been able to tolerate this type of food. Why is that? OK, mm -hmm. let's look at that and talk about food allergies or food intolerances because our mm -hmm. bodies can change. Um, or just like the genetic factor, I think Marissa was mentioning that, like, uh, as you get older, things change. Right. <laughs> so there may yeah. be. Yeah. <laughs> so as you get older, those things change, but also your eating habits will change along with that. And people may not realize it at first or may feel fatigue or lack of energy and not realize they're not eating enough. 
Mm-hmm. That's where that check-in comes in. So mm-hmm. I would honestly say just as much as you're going to the doctor, just as much as you're going to your therapist, whoever, to get those check-ins, you mm-hmm. also need to go um, to see a dietitian too. Which is interesting because, I mean, how many of us have someone that we go to regularly? I don't, I don't think most people will go unless there is an issue, exactly. right? Yeah. Because I've never been to one. Um, Jackie, how about you? Anything you want to add to what? What Jasmine has said. Um, no, I think that's good. Um, I, I never thought about it going as much as you go to your regular doctor, but mm-hmm. I do feel like one thing and being as all the other fitness instructors on here are aware of, they people come to us about everything, um, yeah. you know, about their problems at home, about, you know, the eating. So that's why I did become a nutritionist because I felt like, man, I'm getting all these questions. I need to be able to answer these things you know, the correct way. And one thing that I feel is that having your surroundings, you know, I had to lose a lot of friends when I went through my health journey because Mm. I'm in a sorority as well. And one thing with the sorority, we did a lot of eating out. Let's go out. Let's go do this. And at that time of my life, it was, it just wasn't helping. So I wasn't trying to say that those people weren't good for me. That's not, that's not it. It's just, I had to do some mental work and, and just take a step back for about nine months. That's how long it took me to really get myself together um, physically, mentally, um, with my food intake. You know, a lot of people don't understand the journey. Mm-hmm. And you have to be around in your surroundings with other people that understand that you can talk to and feel so comfortable like us right now talking to each other. We all are like, man, this is so true. You know, we understand. And it just makes you feel a lot better about what you do. And that's how you end up losing weight, being healthier, um, Mm -hmm. being in a better place mentally, because that also is a lot that involves the mental piece is huge to anything we do in life, really. Um, But you definitely have to have the right mindset because it is it is a it is a um, it is a marathon, I would say, in terms of being able to live a healthy life it's not something you just do overnight and it's done right mm-hmm. and, I, and i think for me my catalyst too was just and think you know i'm i'm blessed to not be on any medications that i have to take right mm-hmm. which is a good place to be and i I'm, i might be older than all of y'all who are on this call right on this on this video podcast right now so i'm blessed in that respect but there are definitely things I need to watch out for, right? Cholesterol, you know, the, um, uh, our um, blood sugar levels, right? Things like that. So I'm constantly making sure I um, don't get to that point where I must take medication, right? Can I add this, Michelle? Um, okay. One thing too, and I don't know if the other ladies have gone to this part yet, is menopause. And that's one oh thing that's different from your 40s to your 50s that you have to add in um, to the health journey because a lot of times when you're going through menopause, you're sweating, you're going, your body's yes. going to be like, I don't want to work out. I don't want to do anything. I just need to eat. I just need, you have to allow those things. I didn't know that in my 40s. Yes. I experienced that I, in my the parents didn't talk about, I don't know about y'all, but my mother didn't <laughs> talk about menopause. I mean, nope. it was totally a secret. And I'm going to put a plug in for my, so I'm in a sorority, which most people know. We're actually going to be hosting a podcast on this. I should say a Zoom call on this. So I'll make sure I share it because uh, it is open to the public. But it is one of those things to your point, Jackie, is like, you know, as you get older, your hormones, your hormones change and things that you used to do. I mean, how many of us worked out when we were younger? I used to work out a lot and would lose weight like that. Ah, that ain't happening now. <laughs> Not happening now. So other tips you guys have, and, and Jack, I do want to get into this conversation about and whoever else wants to join in. So, and I don't know, I don't want to call it a fad, but you do have, you know, intermittent fasting um, out there and um, juicing. So a lot of people will do both of those things, right? That's been a corporate. I know I, I've been, I've done it, right? I still believe in intermittent fasting. I think it does help me to, 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 to get focused. 
But thoughts on on intermittent fasting and juicing. So I'll start with I'll start with Jasmine first. Go ahead, Jasmine. Yeah, intermittent fasting, like for those who don't know or who may be joining in, it's basically where you're focusing on eating during a very specific period of time. Um, and there's so many different types of them. I'm not going to confuse everybody on the call. Yeah, yeah. So many different types of them where you're not you're eating for a short period of time, meaning all the calories you need in a day. And the rest of the time, you're not eating. So, for example, you may be on an intermittent fast that's like 16-8, meaning you don't eat for 16 hours within a 24-hour period, but you eat for eight hours. Um, lately, to me, it has become a fad. Um, but I would say that it's important to pick what's right for you because yeah. with, what people don't think about with intermittent fasting is that eight-hour period, if you chose that time period to eat within, you have to eat all of the nutrients that you would need to keep your body functioning for the mm -hmm. day that mm -hmm. you typically would spread out in a 24 hour period. And so one mistake that I see most people make is they'll, they'll do the 16, eight, which is 16 hours, not eating eight hours. They will eat, but then they're going to McDonald's or they're going somewhere, mm -hmm. right. To get that mm -hmm. food yeah. and then not understanding why their weight is up and down or it's not sustainable or they don't have any energy or whatever that symptom may be. So I think it's important for us not to lose sight that if you do decide to do that and it actually works for your lifestyle, um, then you want to make sure that you're eating nutrient rich whole foods as much as you can. Um, right. And those foods will fill you because they're full of fiber. And so if for some people that I've counseled, it's actually hard for them to eat <laughs> enough in that eight hour period if, if you're eating your whole foods because they're full within, you know, 20 minutes and then mm -hmm. it lasts for up to four hours. It's like, oh my gosh, I have to eat this much more within the next, you know, two to three hours or whatnot. So I think it's something that you need to really figure out is, am I doing this to just be on the bandwagon with everyone else? What new yeah. celebrity has tried this? What's the true intention? And is it again, like we've been talking about, is it sustainable for me to do for a lifetime? Mm -hmm. Um, and is it adaptable as well? Is that something that I can adapt to? Can my family adapt to it? Do I have yeah. support in yeah. doing it? Yeah. Um, with juicing, it's a little bit different. Juicing is not necessarily horrible for you. But again, if we're using this as, okay, this is going to be my meal, you're missing out on so much fiber because when you juice, um, you're taking out the fiber, you're keeping some of the nutrients from the fruit or the vegetables that you decide to juice. Um, so it could be a good, I'll call it like an extra credit to what right. you're currently doing, right? right. Um, but to like do it as a meal replacement, some people can see that it backfires with them mm -hmm. where they're starting to crave different things and eat a little bit more. But again, it's different for everyone. You just got to yeah. figure out what works for you. I would yeah. hate for people to miss out on fiber, which lowers the cholesterol, which prevents yeah. heart disease, which controls your blood sugars. Yeah. And I remember when juicing first became popular, I started doing it. And one of the things that my dentist told me about um, was I was using too much fruit and less vegetables. So I think that's the common mistake people, because I ended up with cavities that I hadn't had cavities as an adult at all. Right. But um, with the juicing, a lot of times, especially when we first started, people needed that sweetness to it. So they would add more fruit. But you need to have that. You have to have that balance. Right. You do. So, and, and the same mm -hmm. thing with smoothies, too. Like, you know, we're, we're quick to go on the smoothie kick as well. But if you're adding two bananas and three apples and, and apple juice and, and and then you drink it all in one, that's a lot. Of it sugar is. At one it time. is. That's yeah. really how much you should have throughout the entire day. So exactly. thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. Yeah. Marissa, were you going to say something? No. OK. Does somebody else want to say something? Fatima? No. Y'all good? Jackie, anything to add there? Okay, all right. Um, I think we talked about common mistakes. I don't know if we got into, did we go into common mistakes, y'all? A little bit we talked about. I know I answered the question, but I don't think everybody else did. Okay, so anyone else want to add to common mistakes people make? I, I wanted to add too, I like that y'all are saying portion size. And I think one way to really like evolve that statement too would be, portion size and acknowledging that everyone's portion sizes are different, right? Yeah. And so, you know, sometimes we look at these diets and we look at these eating patterns, even as a dietitian, I may say, okay, this is typically the recommendation, but I, I depend so heavily on 
um, us also acknowledging our hunger cues and our fullness cues. Because as a culture of people, we have like numbed that so much where we don't even know sometimes when we're hungry. We mm. sit up here with a headache, we're on the computer, we're busy, we're distracted. And we, we think, oh, I'm just thirsty. But really, it's like, think about the last time that you ate. So I think it's important to bring up like those hunger cues too. What have you, when is the last time you, you know, acknowledge when your stomach feels empty or when your stomach yeah. is growling or when you can no longer concentrate? Those are yeah. all signs or potential signs that you may be hungry. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of products out here that try to suppress that appetite. But I want people to understand like having an appetite is normal. That yeah. is healthy. Um, in order for our body to get nutrients, we need signals to tell us that we're hungry to function throughout the day because food is energy. And yeah. so I do want to point that out for portion size. I know we hear it constantly over and over, portion control, portion control. But one strategy that can help that is acknowledging and knowing when you're hungry, but also knowing when to stop eat. Because, yeah. you know, as black people, what we do, we like the clean plate committee. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this, Michelle. We feel like yeah. we have to drink and eat everything, right? Yeah. Um, eat till we sleepy. Yeah, exactly. Mm, <laughs> okay. Mm. Yes. Yes. So that's yes. important. Yeah. And I know for me, too, I notice when I don't have enough water. I don't know if you guys. I was just about to tell that, my skin. Yeah. My skin gets very dry. Um, even my hair, and I know I'm low, y'all, but yeah, I do have some hair on my head, but even my hair, but my skin and my hair and, and other things, I can just tell when I have not had enough water. Fatima, you going to say something? I know Marissa going to talk water, so I'm not going to do it, but Jasmine okay. was talking about portion control. One of the things I'm going to let Marissa do the water. Cause she was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things I'm going to say when Jasmine was talking about portion control is like, when you're hungry, like you, you're supposed to eat, you can snack. Now, yeah. be smart about the snacking that you're doing. It's not that right. you can't eat. I've seen people, you know, at work say, oh, I'm starving. But I'm like, okay, so, you know, you, you want a snack? Well, no, I'm, I'm not going to eat that. And then I turn around and they got a bag of Doritos on their desk. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, you just told me you didn't want a snack. Like, I've got some fruit in here. You know, it's just be conscious of the things that you're you're putting in your body. Because yeah. Yeah. Again, I you you have to really start looking at it as we're getting older. It's like you know what they say: what you put in is what you get out. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Go ahead, Marissa. What I was going to say about water is, you know, one mistake people make is not hydrating. Water helps with digestion. I like to think of our listen. The dietitian got the last word on this, but mm -hmm. let me say I like to think of our colon as it's a straw. And if you, there's no water, no liquid moving through that, it, it's getting packed. It's yeah. getting packed. And then we wonder why sometimes we might have indigestion or stomach problems. Not a doctor. You guys take that for what it's worth. Yeah. The second mistake I think we make, and it has to do with not so much portion control, but you talked about eating till, we'll till we are tired. We do not pay attention to what certain foods are doing to us. So we'll eat. You know, I, I, this I'm the enthusiast that will research something to death, but it talks about fried food being hard to digest. We will eat fried food. Our body takes a lot of energy away from other motor functional things to digest that food. That's why after fri fried food, I'm tired. Yeah. The mistake we make is not noticing how we feel after we've eaten something. Yeah. You're tired. You, you might want to associate that with sleep but you might want to associate it with the meal that you just had. So we have to pay attention. We are eating mindlessly in a way. Mm -hmm. And the after effects of whatever we eat, we're not associating that with our food. And wow. we need to do that more. And I know for me, um, because I was having a lot of heartburn, I didn't know what it was, right? But I realized from talking to my doctor, it's like, Michelle, there's certain foods I have to just stay away from. I can no longer eat it, right? Um, red meat is something I have to be prepared. And, and by the way, red meat is the hardest thing to digest, right? But um, who knew that, you know, onions and cabbage and broccoli could also cause problems? So I know for me, I have to limit that kind of stuff. So to your point, noticing when your body is going through changes and really 
stepping back to figure out, okay, what may be causing the problem? And it's probably something you're eating, right? Um, and and being mindful of um, how your body how your body reacts. Jackie, uh, Jackie, anything you want to add to that to this conversation? Uh, no, I think I'm good. I, I answered that one at the beginning, so I'm okay. Good. All mm -hmm. right, cool. I um, y'all, this has been this has been a good conversation because I think um, yeah, some people been commenting, but let me. Summer had a a comment here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put hers up here. She said, "Can you guys touch on protein?" So my dietitian incorporated eggs and yogurt into my meal plan. Have the milk products don't really agree with me. Plus eggs with snacks and fruits are okay. What are protein and milk alternatives? Anybody want to touch upon that? I can. I don't mind. Um, Go ahead, Jasmine. So protein. First, I want to let you know, like there's protein in a lot of different foods. And I, a lot of times it's not really... Um, uh, communicated that in like so social media or media period. Um, but there's protein in your whole grains, which is another reason why it's good to eat whole grains, not just because the fiber component, but it also has sources or traces of protein in it. Um, mm -hmm. You have protein in your nuts and seeds as well. So if you can tolerate nuts and seeds, that may be good. Um, and then nut butters are a good source of protein. Um, beans and legumes or lentils are an excellent source of protein and you really get the most fiber out of all your plant sources from um, your beans and lentils. Um, so that's just to kind of give you an idea of like what other ways that you can get protein throughout your day without feeling like you have to eat yogurt or drink milk necessarily. But there are alternates where you can, um, like soy. I know there's lots of products that you can have like soy yogurt or soy milk that has a little bit more protein than some of your like almond milks or your other nut type of milks typically. So that may be a good option too, but I would definitely say like diversify your protein sources instead of just sticking only with, I can only get it from milk. Uh, even cheese, like if you can tolerate cheese, I know a lot of people, if you can't tolerate necessarily milk, cheese is a good source but it doesn't want to be like the main source because it can have a lot of what we call saturated fat too. So mm -hmm. again, diversifying the types of protein you get, because if we're honest, when we think about fitness or when we think about getting healthy, the first thing that we think about is where do I get protein as if we don't already get enough of it. And mm -hmm. we probably get enough of it if you eat animal sources. So if you eat anything that came from an animal, chicken, beef, pork, fish, you know, anything like that, um, you are probably getting enough protein in a day. So reframe your mind to not think that you're not getting enough protein because you may very well be. It's just how can you diversify with other foods that are going to also add other benefits to it as well. Yeah. And, and Chaz, one of the things I heard, and, I, and I, this must have been a, a podcast that I um, was listening to, but, you know, one of the things that I, I've heard people say is fish is a good source. You know, they won't eat red meat, but they'll go more towards fish and all that. And what I'm understanding is we got to be careful even with the type of fish that we eat. So shrimp, for example, I heard was it may taste good, but too much of that can cause a problem. So Jasmine, any any comments around that? Yes. Any, yeah. Yeah. I've heard many different things too. So one concern for, especially when it comes to like pregnant women, they can have a high sources of mercury. If you're eating a lot of a, a ton of fish, a ton would be like, let's say more than 12 to 16 ounces of fish in a typical day. Right. Okay. Um. So, and, and most people don't eat like fish that actually contain the most mercury, like a shark. Uh, okay. Mackerel, yeah, things like that. Yeah, but yeah. In most cases, it's not a ton of concern. Yeah. Um, but I think it still goes back to the, like the protein, right? Whenever we think of even eating salmon or fish or sardines or whatever it is, it doesn't need to be half the plate. It should be roughly on average, like the palm of our, our hand, if we can, mm -hmm. or some people like to compare a deck of cards or a checkbook, that would be a rough size yeah. of how much we would need of any type of animal type protein. Some of your proteins and even like your chicken breasts will have a little bit of saturated fat in it, and watch, which is why sometimes they say take off the fat um, right. or take off the skin, right? Because you lessen that saturated fat necessarily. But I think it's important, again, going back to diversifying what type of protein you get 
but also know that if it's an animal source of protein, it's going to have more saturated fat in it or cholesterol, mm-hmm. like the shrimp. So okay. there's a reason there's a designated recommendation to start out for yourself if okay. possible. Thank Michelle, you. Can I add something yeah. to what you said, tying into what Jasmine said? Yes, ma'am. And then, you know, I, I also like a lot of plant protein um, stuff that comes from peas. You know, it's got one of the highest per hundred gram of protein. But a, a mistake that people make to go back to mistakes is not getting their baseline numbers. You talked about eating shrimp or, or chicken or this and this or that could raise your cholesterol. Well, how do you know what's being raised if you don't know what the baseline is? Yeah, good so point, people Marissa. Have to go and get a baseline of their numbers, whatever panels that might be at your doctor, and then see what these different foods are doing to those numbers over time. Yeah, but we yeah. start at a place of wanting to make a change, but like Jackie said, health and wellness is not about size. Let's get some numbers associated to who you are and what you're doing. Yeah. And you could your panel could be great. Then take it from there. Good you point, see? Marissa. Yeah. yeah, good point. And I'm going to have a general practitioner join me. And I don't know if I'm going to do it in April or May. But like I said, I'm going to do a health series on mental, physical, and spiritual health. And um, I will have a general practitioner join me to talk about that kind of stuff, Marissa. So thank you for that. Marissa, I'm going to um, punt to you. You have been a cheerleader. I know I've joined your challenge in January. What's your why for doing what you do? I know that people struggle with this. Mm-hmm. I think I've found ways to win in my own life. I'm an encourager by nature. So I'm yeah. going to get in the game and encourage people along the way. People mm-hmm. are looking for tips strategies, mindset, and it's an everyday thing. And so I want to help people find a thing that they can latch onto that keeps them forever fit, as I call it. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm all for people. Yeah. And what I wrote to you was, to whom much is given, much is required. Yeah. I've been given much in the way of mindset and discipline, but guess what? I'm not special. We yeah. all have discipline in us. Yeah. And I want to show you, tell you, encourage you along the way that you have it too. Yeah. Let's just keep making adjustments. Let's not give up on ourselves to find the thing that's going to work for us. So I'm for yeah. the people. Good, good. And Jackie, I think that's one of the reasons why you offer so many different things because you do challenges as well. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes, yeah. I do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I, okay. I try to do something to meet everyone's needs. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest part. I want everyone to feel successful um, because everyone loses or everyone exercises or does things in their own way. So whatever someone does, we need to keep encouraging them to do whatever it is you do. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times people look at me when they're see me in the grocery store. Oh, hey, hey, Z Fitness. My name's not Jackie anymore. It's Z Fitness. (laughs) Hey, Z Fitness. I'm going to get to one of your classes. I'm going to get to one of your classes. And I say, you guys don't have to say that. All I want you to do is to do whatever it is to keep fit. That's why I invented Z Fitness and um, the, for the community, for everyone to understand whatever it is that you do for fitness, just do it. Mm-hmm. And um, that's what makes me happy. I just want to provide a platform to get you thinking about mm-hmm. doing whatever it is you need to do to keep yourself healthy. Because if you don't take care of yourself first, you can't take care of no one else. And, and that's, that's important. That is so important. Yeah, it's yeah. the biggest, biggest part that we need to know. And that's why I did what I did for myself. And I wanted to do, when I did it for myself, I didn't want to be selfish. I wanted to open it up for everyone else. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. So ladies, what do you have coming up? What's what's going on? What do y'all have? This is your time to, to talk about your, your business and what you have coming up so people could take advantage of something that you're, that you're doing. So... Jasmine, any, yeah, go ahead, Patima. Go ahead. <laughs> um, we actually, I'm actually going to start doing uh, live yoga classes and, and video so people could have it um, when it's convenient for them. Mm-hmm. So, Good. yeah, looking Thank forward you. to that. <laughs> Patima, something we did not talk about, and I want you to touch upon it just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Just um, 
I know, and I shared with you a video. Uh, yes. Someone who, <laughs> we won't mention names, but mention um, names. had talked about yoga um, and it uh, being demonic and other, other things in terms of it. What can you say about exercise? So I'll say this, and I watched that. Um, I watched it twice. I said I, I couldn't watch it a third time because I just thought it was silly. It was someone yeah. who she she wasn't very well. She wasn't well versed on it. I think that you can look at anything and demonize it. And mm. sometimes we do that when we don't have an understanding of it. So one of the things she mentioned was uh and, and this person is a, a devout Christian and I understand and and nothing against her. Um, but she went to demonize uh, Hinduism. Mm -hmm. And so Hinduism is connected to yoga and yoga is the devil. And it was just ludicrous. It was just like, that's my opinion was that's what you got out of that. But um, I'm really I've never. Again, she's not. Uh, a professional. Mm -hmm. She wasn't mm -hmm. well versed on it. And, and mm -hmm. I respect everyone's opinion, but it, it's one of those things I say when people aren't happy, you know, that misery loves company. Mm -hmm. You're unhappy mm -hmm. with yourself. You're unhappy. I'm assuming uh, you probably, she probably is not in the best physical shape um, mm -hmm. just from looking at her mm -hmm. um, mentally that's probably an issue. And, and, you know, emotionally, of course, cause you know, when you're physical and you're mental and everything's not balanced, yeah. you know, emotionally. So she, it was, it was kind of, it was silly to watch to me. Like, how can you yeah. sit there and yeah. say that? And and then just the, the overall disrespect for someone else's religion. Like what, what is your problem lady? It's, yeah. It's, and, and I mentioned that because it's I yoga. Think, <laughs> yeah. But I, but I think it's important for, and the only reason I mention it because I think sometimes you have to try something new, yeah, to um to even get out of your plateau, right? So whether it's Zumba or yeah. Pilates or I know Jackie, you do um, weight classes and things like that. So you know, I, I mentioned that because I know there are some views out there about yoga. Uh, yeah. But to your point, just do your do your homework and make sure you're doing it for do, the right. Do for your yourself. homework. Yeah, absolutely. Do your homework. And um, I'm a true believer in doing what serves you. Right. Yeah. So you come to my you come. I'll speak for my studio. You come to my studio. First thing I tell you is if I do something that you don't like, if I go in a position that you don't like, don't do it. Yeah. I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. Your whole point is to come here and decompress. Yeah, I know a lot of people that um, and I'm one of them. Uh, I don't I don't own at the end of my yeah. yoga classes and I go to plenty of yoga, you know, classes with other instructors. That's their thing. Yeah. I may do it depending on how I feel and I might not. You do what feels comfortable for you. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't jump to a conclusion and call it dem demonic and try to demonize it. But if you're not comfortable doing it, just don't. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Thank you for that. And what do you have coming up? Classes, class wise. Did you talk about that? I got class every day. Well, not your classes. <laughs> I thought you had, you, have a, you don't have an event coming up? I don't, I, I, we are, it's in the works. It's okay. in the works. Um, right. So I'll push it, of course, on my platforms. But uh, yeah. the biggest thing is just getting this online live classes together. I'm just excited. And people have been, yelling at me to do it uh yeah. for about a year. <laughs> so Jackie, I finally I got my life Jackie, together. You're, you're also trying to do that too, Jackie, right? More. I know you started doing some of that, the online stuff. I'm right? actually getting ready. Yes, I'm gonna yeah. start doing some classes online because people were asking about not being able to get to my classes or they don't live here in the area. So yes, I'm starting that actually in March. We're starting that. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. What else you have going on, Jackie? Um so I do teach a lot of classes too. The only days that I don't teach is I, is Sundays. Okay. Um, and then I have other instructors as well. But we have, um, uh, I'm so excited about our WOW program that I created. It's WOW means women on weights. And we did our first eight week um, challenge in January and it just ended this past Thursday. And I had 57 people 
to um, register for that class and to complete that challenge. And it was amazing. It's actually a weight class and it's cardio. So it's hip hop yeah. music with weights and it's cardio. So yeah. it just took off. I actually um, made it up through uh, taking other classes and training with other things because I'm also a fitness certified fitness instructor. So I can, you know, make up different classes. And that one was just a big hit with everyone. Yeah. And um, we're starting our new session, um, eight week session, March and April. So okay. um, that's pretty much, you know, um, what's going on right now. And then we do have a bus trip that happens in August. Um, the and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to go, I'm trying to make that happen for me. Come, I want to come with us to the beach. Yeah, that was cool. I saw, saw your video. So I yeah, we here. fitness on the beach. We had 200 people out there last summer. And all it is, is just having fun, relaxing, meeting people. We do Zumba. I invite other instructors to come out and we just have a ball, Michelle. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. just so rewarding to see women get together and just have fun and just yeah. let go of the stressors and come out and just spend the day at the beach. Yeah. So that's what I'm and, doing. That's what's coming and, up. And I'll put your website and Fatima and also your, um, your page as well, Jasmine. Um, I'll do a debrief post online and make sure I connect your, your websites and your um, Facebook pages to that. Jasmine, anything you have coming up? Well, first, it sounds like I need to come to the classes. With yeah, <laughs> let me tell you, Jackie offers a lot of classes. And I know the four of us, though, Jasmine, Fatima, myself, and Jackie are all in North Carolina. Yeah. Marissa, you're in Virginia now, now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, Jackie, uh, Jackie's always has something going on. I always. love that. I love yeah. that. Definitely yeah. the weights for sure. That's been lately for me, helping me with injuries and all the other things. But mm -hmm. I would love to do that. But for, yeah, for the, the nonprofit Eat Well Exchange, we um, just launched our Prevent Diabetes Culinary Program. So we're only about four weeks in, but we're still accepting people on an ongoing basis. So if it's free, it's basically nutrition education classes from uh, one of our nutritionists and also um, culinary classes that I'm usually teaching or a chef um, mm -hmm. to incorporate those cultural foods. So it's a free program. It lasts up to about six months. Um, and you can uh, go to eatwellexchange.org uh, backslash prediabetes. And actually tomorrow I'm supposed to be speaking at a meet and greet at, um, I think it's Big Buy or Big Buy Coffee in Raleigh. Okay. I'm okay. um, at 10 a.m. tomorrow. So, you know, if you want to see me in person, it'll be a great time to like ask questions for us to conversate over coffee, just about nutrition and kind of get to know, um, for me to get to know you all's journey and just connect uh, in a way as much as we can. Good. And I'm looking at the, um, the comments to see if there's anything else that I might have missed. I don't think there is. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, just thank you guys for taking the time. To speak. Go ahead, Mar Marissa. Yes, I'm yeah. sorry. Just want to share. Um, I have an ebook coming out. Listen, yes. this has been in the yes. works for, for so yeah. long. But as the years have gone, I've been able to add to it. So it's basically 125 ways you can stay forever fit. But it's the hunt, you know, ways, craziest things you can do, the craziest things you can do to stay fit. So I have a crazy meter, right? It's everything on in it's a spectrum, right? So I give you the the, the low, the medium, and the high. You're not gonna be jumping off of bridges or anything, but this is around what else can I do? Keep pushing the needle around, okay, I can do this differently. And as you age, things change. So then yes. you have to, so I give people ways to think differently about staying forever fit. And it's, it's not anything you've read. I mean, yeah. everything from eating your food cold. Oh my gosh. To, um, craziest thing, sleeping in your gym wear. If you don't sweat at night, sleeping in your gym wear, getting up, brushing your teeth and going crazy. Mm. So it's, it's things that I'm, I'm going to give you no excuses. You got no excuses. And there'll I be something in there that everybody can exactly. do. Exactly. Ways okay. to get it done. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all of you for taking your time, especially on a Friday night to be with me. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to bring, put y'all in the green room. If y'all can just wait until I sign out, but y'all, I hope, hope you have been blessed by my guest. I know I have been, um, and I talked to them early in the week, but 
for those of you who follow me, you know, I don't ask them for their answers when we come live because I really want it to be an authentic um, conversation. And um, I know I learned some things this evening, so I hope that you have as well. I am going to wrap up my um, Jumpstart series with finances in March. Um, and I have some guests joining me who um, have a, a financial podcast. So I'm excited about that. But um, tune into my, my Facebook page. Um, that's where I um, put a lot of information about what I have coming up, including things that I do around coaching, uh, career um career, executive, and leadership coaching. But more so, if you need a dose of inspiration, I try to be very positive on, on my page, my personal page as well. So um, follow me. You can also follow my YouTube page uh, so you can get updated on when the next podcast will be. And I run my podcast monthly. I find for me, for my mental health, that's what worked. So until next time... Um, I will see you in March. Hopefully have a blessed week and weekend, everybody. Bye. Bye.